Hello and welcome to Sequential Smart, where we take a look at comic books from both the East and the West. The golden age of comic books brought us a number of superheroes that would affect not only the state of the comic book industry, but also popular culture. You of course had the big three of Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. Then you had characters that had significance, but wouldn't gain prominence in their original incarnations, instead being succeeded by other characters. These include Green Lantern, The Flash, The Blue Beetle, The Atom, and Starman. But one you probably haven't heard of is The Ray. Originally appearing in 1941, Lanford Happy Terrell was exposed to lightning and sunlight during a ballooning accident and given light powers. Eventually, The Ray was bought from Quality Comics by DC, along with a number of other heroes. But then Crisis on Infinite Earths happened. His origin was changed so that the accident was a setup by a government project to expose Terrell to a light bomb. Yes, really. And make his child a human light hybrid. Yes, really. That way, he could be an emissary to a sentient light creature from space someone theorized would come to Earth one day. What are you looking at me for? This is comic books. Just roll with it. The child that eventually resulted from this was rather unoriginally named Ray Terrell, eventually taking the mantle of the Ray. He first appeared in a miniseries in 1992 before joining the Justice League. Two years later, he finally got his own solo series, which we'll be looking at today. So without further ado, let's look at The Ray, number one. Let's start with the cover. It's actually pretty nice. It's simple, iconic, dynamic, and shiny gold. Any scan I do would hardly do the thing justice. It's really too bad the comic inside doesn't measure up to the elegant cover. So, things were going well. HELP! Oh yeah, dude, you have this completely under control. So we see Ray flying away from a fire giant on a two-page spread. In an attempt to fight back, Ray starts formulating plans. Maybe I can gaffle him. What the hell does that even mean? If I can haul it fast enough, get in close, and put my serve on. You'll notice very early on in this comic that it wants desperately to inject as much faux youth slang in as possible. Probably to appeal to the young people today. In the 90s. As you can probably imagine, the Ray's plan works out about as well as you'd expect anything to do with gaffling wood. Instead, he just decides to straight up blast the giant in the chest, all while spouting more confused youth speak. But that too backfires. ROT! I was four when this comic came out. Was ROT really an effective substitute for actual swear words in the 90s? Anyway, the giant tumbles ass over tea kettle and threatens to squash the puny humans on the street below. So Ray tries to stop him with a light construct. But, since he's not a Green Lantern, it quickly proves too much. Okay, now I can choke. Yeah, I choked too seeing that ad for Steven Seagal's On Deadly Ground on the opposite page. That's so lame. You're telling me, that movie sucked. He's the kind of guy that would drink a gallon of gasoline so he could piss in your campfire. You could drop this guy off at the Arctic Circle wearing a pair of bikini underwear without his toothbrush, and tomorrow afternoon he's going to show up at your poolside with a million-dollar smile and a fistful of pesos. So the scene changes to Ray sitting in his apartment, composing an email to his mom. I... well, I killed somebody last night. Mama just killed a man. Put a gun against his head... Pulled my trigger, now he's dead. Flashback to Ray trying to rent an apartment from a slightly stereotypical Asian landlord. And the room he's shown is pretty crappy, all things considered. A young man's first digs should say, I've arrived. There's no refrigerator. Pyoff, kid, you want place? 
And then more flashbacks to various landlords that refused to give Ray a room, such as Suited Guy Gardner, J. Joma Jameson, and Jim Rice, abusive foster father of Obsidian. So Ray decides to take the only apartment anyone will let him rent, and then decides to stand in his room, staring into space. I stood there for like a week, listening to the ghosts. Then I realized I was late for work. In retrospect, standing in one place for an entire week was probably not the best idea. And then, because Ray didn't have enough problems to complain to us about, he has to wear the chicken costume at work, and proceeds to lose a considerable amount of his respectability. Just then, a greaser shows up! So, Hank. Coolin', kid. Clockin' that grip. Yo, you buggin' a what? What are you saying? This guy is Ray's cousin Hank, and by heaven does he have a rockin' pompadour. How much hair gel did he use to get it like that? Look a little stressed, kid. Need to max out a little. Take some time. Very funny, Hank. You know how much I hated those four years of max class in high school. Each fluid physician representing a maximum kill zone, inflicting maximum damage on the maximum number of opponents. Long story short, too late, Hank pressures Ray into using those powers to take them on a day trip to Hawaii partly to check out a new volcanic formation called the Hand Volcano, and partly to get chicks. Then Ray's girlfriend, Jenny, shows up. So, either Hank wants to take all the girls for himself, or he wants Ray to seriously cheat on his girlfriend. I can see why Ray hangs out with this guy. He seems like a respectable young man. After Ray broods some more, we cut to Hawaii, where he monologues even more. And then this happens. Shoot, look a dare. Yup. Hey, yup. Got a bad feeling about that one, Chester. Yup. Yup. Third time today that little guy's been to my volcano for the fifth day straight. Yup. Hey, yup. So basically, this green guy in a floral print shirt has been dumping stuff in the volcano for the last few days. And only these two locals seem to notice anything's odd. Hell, when Ray sees him, he just decides to help him, finding it not the least bit strange that a short green man is hauling a sack up to the mouth of an active volcano. Got my eye on you, green varmint! Yep. Yep. Okay, I'll stop. 